this was written by Paul, not Jesus. And the Quran was written by Muhammad, not Jesus. And you still believe what Muhammad says about Jesus? Yes, I... Yes, oh, wait, wait, say it again. So yes, I believe what Muhammad, who came 600 years later, tells me about Jesus in Arabic, a language Jesus didn't speak, but Paul, who met the eyewitnesses of Jesus, I don't trust them. You see how stupid you sound, James? But uh, there's th th things in the, in the Bible that you can't fully trust, like... Uh, like what well, do you mean like your prophet telling you you can marry a minor who has in puberty that you can trust your prophet marrying his adopted son's divorced wife that you can trust your prophet abolishing adoption that you can trust your prophet saying take married captive women and rape them that you can trust but we can't trust Paul. now i found that to be a very interesting argument so on one hand you have a gentleman who is making a very strong case the fact that you will believe what Muhammad said about Jesus, but you won't believe what Paul said about Jesus. And mainly it's because of the religion to which each individual person has been uh, indoctrinated into or grown up into. So one case is being made on one side, another case being made on the other side. And they are both really contradictory to each other because the guy's right. You're going to believe what Muhammad said about Jesus, but you're not going to believe what Paul wrote about Jesus, who supposedly was closer to the time frame of Jesus. Well, not supposedly. Well, supposedly, because we have no proof that Paul actually existed. We just have letters that are attributed to Paul and letters attributed to a person who wrote the same style as Paul. And then we just say that it's Paul. But in this situation, the Christian guy does make more sense than the Muslim guy. But then the Christian guy himself does not make sense either. And the reason why, because this argument can be um, leveraged on him. You believe what you think was written by a gentleman named Paul who supposedly got his information secondhand through eyewitnesses and got his matches secondhand in another instance from an eyewitness, a person who was telling, talking about what other people eyewitnessed. So none of the information from Paul is firsthand. It is all based on what somebody else said, what somebody else claimed. But yet you will not listen to the silence of over 120 different historians who were writing at the time frame when Jesus was supposedly living. So I want you to conceptualize this for a second. You have a grown man who is writing histories, writing what's going on in the world, in the Levant, living in the Levant, and that person who, was, who would have been around when Jesus was performing all these miracles made zero mentionings about Jesus, 120 of them, you would think at least 10% of those people, 12, would have been making commentary about this Jesus. And when they were writing the histories after Rome reconquered you know, Jerusalem and did all these things, they would have written this Jesus, Messiah guy, walking on water and healing the sick and feeding 5,000 people with a two-piece fist sandwich and casting out demons and raising people from the dead to make them into zombies. You would have thought that they would be saying something, but they said nothing. But then a hundred years later, you're willing to take the words of Tacitus who wrote not about Jesus, but what people believed in, and that people believed in this Jesus. But at the same time, you will take what Tacitus is saying about Jesus and validate the existence of Jesus. But Tacitus also wrote about Serapis and the miracles that were performed through Vespasian by Serapis. But yet you won't take that Serapis actually existed as well. So it's hypocritical that you would look at the Muslim guy and say that you're taking what somebody wrote 600 years after Jesus about Jesus and won't take what somebody who wrote 40, 50 years after Jesus about what other people told them about Jesus, you won't take his information, but yet you won't take the fact that people were silent about Jesus. You won't take the fact that Tacitus wrote about Serapis. You won't take that information, which makes you hypocritical. You can't cherry pick and pick and choose what arguments you're going to stand on and which ones you're not simply because one fits your narrative and the other one doesn't. You have to look at the full picture of it because when you're looking at the full picture of it, Tacitus is just reporting what people said happened with Vespasian and Serapis. Tacitus is just reporting that there were people who believed, they called themselves Christians, who believed in a Jesus Messiah type character. Pliny was writing about people who believed in a Jesus Messiah type character. 
Josephus wrote about four different Yeshua's who claimed to be Messiah types because claiming to be a Messiah type was a common thing during the Roman Empire in Judea, as well as the name Yashu was a very common name to people in the Levant at that same time frame. It is thinking through it with the big picture and understanding the fullness of a situation that will help you to deconstruct from it because you realize just how flawed belief is and just how flawed the claims of these people or instances being true just really are because all of them are incredibly flawed. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibration.